One of my favorite aspects of bringing a new product to market and starting with a new product is really figuring out where it's going to be best merchandised in the store. A lot of the times our DSD guys, you know, they have the product in the store, they're, they're selling it in the store, and they're going to want that versatility. And the cool thing for us is that, you know, it's going to be different in every state because we're national. You know, having a product in New York, in the bodegas, you know, you're going to want it on a clip strip. You're going to want it, you know, in a point of sale display versus if you are in California or you're in Nevada where there's a lot more store space, you're going to be able to put, let's say, a shipper in there where it's a tear open container. It goes in in the case and, you know, displays a lot more product on the shelf. So you can have that versatility, but knowing that ahead of time is going to be essential. So unfortunately, there's really no shortcut to gaining this kind of knowledge. Nobody's going to do it better than you are. So whether it's you or whether it's somebody that works for you, you're going to want to have the product put in the store. You're going to want to sit there for you know a couple hours a day you're going to want to watch how people regard your product. If they walk up to it, take a look at it and realize that they don't know what it does or what it is, then you're going to have a packaging issue. If they walk by it and they don't look, then you're going to want to have a in-store marketing issue where you might want to put an aisle interrupter or something to get their attention. Or if they go to a product next to it and they pick up a product that's not yours, you're going to want to know why. And you can go over to that person, you can ask them, why didn't you look at this product? What can I do to make that stand out to you? What would be appealing? And getting that kind of information, understanding how your clients are thinking is invaluable. So knowing where the product's going to be in the store, knowing how it's going to be displayed in the store, and giving options of different ways it can be displayed is going to make your product successful. If you want your product by the checkout counter, you're going to want it in a very small footprint. You're going to want it under a certain price point, usually $10 to $15. And you're going to want it very prominently displayed so that people look at it and quickly understand what it is and are impulsive and pick it up. Next, if you're in the aisle, and you're being displayed, let's say you're a sauce line and you're being displayed next to 50 other barbecue sauces. What is gonna make somebody pick your product up when they usually pick up Sweet Baby Rays? You know, you're gonna to wanna to figure out how to be that attention grabber. You're gonna to wanna to be able to convince somebody to try something new, whether that's a tasting program in the store or whether that's, you know, having a bright orange bottle that kind of thing is going to be able to make you more competitive. Lastly, giving versatility to the product, whether it's on a clip strip or you know a carabiner or having a hang from the ceiling, you're going to want to have the versatility to allow your product to stand out and move around in different stores because you know if you're going to be in Publix, you might be on an aisle cap. Um, if you're going to be in Kroger, you may be stuck in the middle of an aisle. So knowing that information, knowing how the product is going to be displayed, how it's going to be viewed, and what's going to make it go off the counter can really only be done by you, somebody close to you, figuring out yourself, trying different things, using guerrilla marketing. Using that approach is going to make your product unstoppable.